Right, so today we're going to be doing a mixed media landscape with some seriously sappy colours as you can see here. We're going to be using acrylics with oil pastels and have some fun with them. So first things being first, you're going to need your piece of paper to work on. It can be a piece of good thick quality cartridge paper, so like 240 GSM or higher. You don't want too much of a surface texture, so a medium grade. Then you're going to need a reference image. For this project I used the image by Frank Cohn who does these images on pixels, completely royalty free, you can print them off and have a go. The link is below if you want to have a go. Um, then you're going to first of all need your acrylics. So I've got two brushes, I've used a number 2 and a number 10 flathead. Flathead brushes will always give you much more of a contemporary edge feel type of painting. If you want something more classical and realistic then you'll want the same size but on a pointed head brush. You're going to need a palette, I've got my Stay Wet which gave me loads of time to, to mess around and get my colours that I want. Then you're going to need your acrylics. So for the acrylics you've got your standard black and white, then I've got my cadmium yellow, my lemon yellow, my cadmium red, my um, crimson red, my ultramarine blue and my cobalt blue. You don't need anything too flashy. Obviously you're going to need a pot of water and a tissue to keep your brush clean. Then once we've done that we're going to move on to oil pastels. So I've got my oil pastel set over here. The more colours you've got, the better your options are. So I've got a nice Pentel set which is really easy to pick up, either online or in art shops. For that, you're going to need some um, baby oil. So any baby oil will do, you don't have to go for any certain brand. And you will also need a brush and a tissue, a much smaller brush for the baby oil application. Right, so now that I've introduced you with everything you're going to need, let's get going, shall we, and start the drawing. Okay, so the first stage to get going um, with anything like this is to obviously do a rough sketch on your piece of paper or your canvas if you're going for canvas. Um, now I've got a few different brushes and obviously I've got my paints laid out and I've got a pot of water and a little bit of tissue. It's worth to always have a piece of tissue if you're working with acrylics because water generally doesn't clean the brush very thoroughly. You need to wipe it off then whack it into the water. So to start off with let's get the drawing down. Now I'm not drawing with pencil and I'm not drawing with charcoal, I'm going to go straight in with my paints. I've laid out my paints as my normal palette so I've got my titanium white down here, my um, Mars Black my ultramarine blue, uh, cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, cadmium red, crimson red. Um, I've got my reference image and my piece of paper just stuck up here. And so I'm going to mix a colour to do a drawing with. Now I personally prefer a colour that's not too strong. And as I'm working on a stay wet palette it means that my, my colour's going to stay wet for longer. Well, let's hope if all's gone to plan. If I mix my two cadmiums together, I'll get an orangey tone, as you can see here. Now, if I add in a little bit of ultramarine blue, it'll brown it up. You can see it goes a little bit green. That just means it hasn't got enough red, because remember that blue and yellow mixed together makes green. So if I increase the red, I should get that bricky tone of red. Now I quite like this to draw in. It's light enough that I can cover up, but strong enough that I can draw with and see what I'm up to. If you're working with a landscape, the first stage is usually always to look at getting your horizon line in so that you can set up how big your sky is in relationship to your land. Now my land is actually really small. I can measure it. I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, nearly seven, one seventh of the height. So if I look at this piece of paper, and I'm just doing this by it, one, oops, I'm just moving that, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to go a little bit higher than that, go around there, that should be around right. The next stage is just to check that your line that you're marking, so I'm looking at this green line, I've got a slight wiggle. I can see a hill. I don't know if it's a hill or whether it's the camera because when a camera takes a photo on the edge sometimes you can get a slight distortion due to the curvature of the lens. So I'm going to make sure that this goes up a little bit higher on the edges and it slopes down slightly into the middle. Just like so. Then I can start drawing in those mountains. 
Uh, I'm kind of just free styling to get those in. And then once I've got those in, I've got that little house just down here to the right. So I'm going to kind of mark it off approximately. This is going to get quite heavily covered with paint. So we're kind of laying out, checking the scale um, and that everything fits in appropriately. Uh, I think that needs to come a little bit more to the right. Uh, and then I get some trees coming down here. And I've got a fence post as well sitting over here. Can you see that fence post that's leaning? Um, and some fences just coming in over here. Uh, and those fences go back into the horizon to this side. Okay. Now I'm going to mark out approximately the, the rough area where these red clouds are going to go. I'm using a longer handled brush so that I can hold it further back, I can keep my eye on the reference image and I can just dab in approximately where these shapes are going to go on my piece of paper. Now I'm not worried if I go wrong, I will go wrong. When you're drawing the first stage is always about making guesses. You are not a robot or a machine, you're a human being. So some of those guesses are going to be wrong, it's only natural. Then, once you make those guesses, you can start building up, identifying where your errors are and getting a far more realistic result. So, kind of bringing this in along here. And you see I didn't need like a huge amount of paint for my drawing stage. I'm keeping it very loose, very simple. Once I've got this, then I need to start working up my, my areas. Now, with acrylics, to blend one colour to another, you need to have the paint fairly thick on the surface of the paper. The thinner the paint layer, the quicker it's going to dry out, which means that you can't blend things. Consider how big your brush is. Now, I'm going to go for a bigger brush because I want this fairly loose due to the nature that we're going to be working into it with the oil pastels. Um, uh, this is actually probably a bit big than I should use, maybe I should use something a slightly smaller but I thought I'd just go for it for this time. Now with this, what you ideally want to work is um, trying to get the rough, right colours in the right place at the first stage. <laughs> Easier said than done. There will be a degree of layering, which is great because with the acrylics, it does dry off. And also if you miss areas with the acrylics, say you put more blue sky in, once that dries and we work the oil pastel in, we can work the pinks on top of that. So it really, it doesn't matter. Try and get the tones right. So you can see that the blue is quite dark over here compared to the blue over here. You can see the pink is quite light over here compared to the pink over here. So try and get those tones in. If you're a little bit nervous about doing sky and the tones, work into the easiest areas first. So putting in these greens is nice and easy with the mountain sky behind, um, the mountain range behind it. I'm going to do the sky first because I'm kind of one of those people, I like to just get everything over and done with. I'm going to grab a big chunk of white with my brush and I'm going to make some lovely yellow. I'm going to work light to dark, you can see that warm yellow down there so if I mix that into my white okay and then I'm going to get a little bit of cadmium red and I'm going to mix some of the, the cadmiums together to make an orangey shade because it's a little bit more orangey down there it's a little bit pinky than I want so I'm going to just make that a bit more orangey I'm going to also grab a bit of white and lighten some of that. So you can see here, I've got wet areas so that I can just dab my brush in and pick up the colours real quick. So I'm kind of making up the shades before I start painting them on the surface of the paper. I'm going to grab some white and I'm going to make some of that really lovely pink that you can see up in the sky. Now this is a crimson mix with a white which will be too hard. So if you mix in a bit of crimson and then you add in a bit of cadmium, it'll give you that pinkier shade. If you're finding it's a little bit more orangey, which some of this is, some of it's a little bit more pinky, some of it's a bit more orangey, mix up the pink like I'm doing, then you can grab a little bit of your cadmium and work it into the side and find those softer orangey tones. And remember, you can rebalance shades. So you can see there, I was just picking up a little bit of the cadmium red to get a very different pink. 
because I've mixed in the yellow. So you can see the pink radically looks different. Okay. Now, I'm going to just whack in a little bit of blue so I have some blue ready to go. I need to be really careful. I'm not going to get cross-contamination with cleaning my brush. So you can see I'm using that tissue and wiping that off. Um, I'm going to grab a bit of cobalt and some white to make a, a very soft sky colour for that left hand side of the picture. I'm gradually introducing the cobalt into the, the mixture so that it can be a little bit softer in areas. And then if I wanted to, I could add a little bit of white in to lighten a little bit of that. Just like so. Now I'm probably going to up the ultramarine blue over here, but I'll do that as I go because it's getting darker, so it's easy to cross-contaminate light colours to darks. So let's get some of this paint down on the surface of the paper now. Just clean my brush off. And I'm going to work in those soft yellows because remember how we were saying, you know, you've got that light, light, light yellowy shade down here. I'm going to keep my brush marks very loose. And kind of impressionist, so they, they've got a, a nice rhythm to them. Let's bring that up. Uh, I'm not too worried about the fiddly little pink areas. I am worried about making my yellow go green. So now that I've laid that yellow down, I'm just washing my brush out before I pick up some of my blue that's nice and light. I might lighten that even more. It's better to be too light and to softly darken it. And then work that blue into my yellow so that I get a nice gentle transition from one colour to another without it going too green. The trick is about how much paint you have on your brush. Then I'm going to bring my blues coming up. And I'm leaving like the pink areas. I'm going to put the pink over the top. Just work in. Try keep the paint fairly thick so that you can cover up those lines that were the original drawing marks. And it keeps it nice and wet for you to blend out any tonal changes that you may want. You can see here I'm working over those to try and be very aware that I need to get them to disappear as I work up the pink on top. Right. Let's get some blue working in here because this is going to be fluffy pink clouds over the top. Grab a little bit more one. Just lighten that up a little bit more. You can see how rhythmic my brush marks are and how quick and spontaneous they are. good coverage down. Now I'm increasing the blue content as I go up into the centre section. Can you see that there? So that should be that section there. Now that looks like it should be slightly darker to me so I'm going to grab a little bit of ultramarine and so I've got an ultramarine and a cobalt and I'm going to darken that down. Now let's work that into the section towards the right hand part of the picture. So, up here. And I've got some along the top. It's getting much more blue. Can you see that change just by upping the quantity of the ultramarine blue towards the right hand side? Uh, it, you could add a bit of cerulean in if you wanted a really good blue. I just thought I'd keep this really simple at this stage because I know brush work and getting lots of different colours down and meshing them can be difficult. But if you've got cerulean and you want to push that a little bit more, feel free to do so. Now it's getting a little bit more lilac -y down this area so if you take your crimson and you mix that in with some of the blues that you're using you could start blending in a little bit at that time. And 
you can see like it's in the shadow clouds just up here. It's a little bit more plummy. So if you add in more of a crimson red, um, cadmium red, it'll give you that plummier lilac type that you might want. And a little bit down here, which will look rather nice. Now I need to get it a little bit lighter, so I'm going to grab a little bit of white and just increase the blue content within that lilac. And that'll give me that softer. Let's get some of that. I reckon I need a little bit more orangey. Right, I'm going to just bring in a little bit more of an orangey tone up here. And definitely around here. Right, so we've got a very rough sky there, just to get that down. Um, I might just increase a little more shadow around here and up the blue. The blue looks a bit, a bit too dark, so let's just lighten that blue in the sky on the right hand side. Remember with this technique we're going to be going back into it, this is just like the base layer that we're working up, so don't worry too much about it. Right, so let's get some of those hills in and the foreground grass. I'm going to put the grass in now because it's nice and light, so if I get a little bit of cadmium yellow mixed in with a bit of cobalt blue. I'm going to add in a little bit of the, the softer light and I can start bringing in, now I'm turning my brush on its side because it's a chisel head brush, that means I can get those kind of nice grassy effects. If I want to make the green a little bit darker, you can see that I just grab in a little bit of the ultramarine blue and I can just pull that in like so and work it up. trick is always to get the balance between the light and the dark in these types of artworks. Right, let's soften some of that out with a little bit of yellow. The grass is sitting up here. And try and make it nice and thick paint. And blend it about. Some dark and lighter highlights if you want to. And if you want to make it really sappy, you can use that lemon and cobalt. It'll give you even a stronger, lighter green. Okay, and then we got to put some of those hills in. Let's bring that in like that. Nice and easy to do with a flat-headed brush. A little bit more lilac-y, so I'm going to wash that brush. Now my water is getting really badly for cross contamination so I need to clean that out in a moment. But I'm pretty much nearly done for this layer of the artwork so I'm not too worried. I'm going to make that kind of a little bit of a, a murkier lilac. The hills, just to recess them back. 
give it a little bit of shadow work. If we take a bit of black, we'll go cadmium red, we'll go very strong dark brown. So I can bring in a little bit of detail down here, those houses. And any kind of closer trees to get that silhouette. I need to just even out the back of that hill because I'm going down a little bit too much. Let's bring that up. Okay, and there you go. So that's the, the quick stage of the painting. We need to allow this to dry or you could blast it with a hairdryer and then we're going to move on to the oil pastel stage. Stay with me, you're going to enjoy this. Right, so once your painting is dry, and mine is not perfectly dry, I'm just like really speed, speeding through this so far faster than I actually should do. But I'm going to work on the dry bits first. Do not put your oil pastel into wear. Rule number one. Okay, so here to my right hand side, I've got my oil pastels. Um, I've got quite a range. You can work in any brand you want. Faber Castell are usually quite good. They're a little bit bigger than Pentels, so it's just because I'm working on a smaller scale, I went for the Pentels. Also, I've got a larger colour range in the set that I own, which also makes life a lot he more helpful with anything like this. There's a lot of colour going on in this sky. So I've got my oil pastels to my right. Um, I've got my reference picture. I've got my painting. I've got a brush. And again, I've got a flat-headed brush. You, you know, if you want something that's really polished as an end result then you probably want more of a uh, pointed head brush so something like that but I like the, the modern flicking of a flat headed brush I've also got some baby oil any brand will do it's just the, the baby oil what I have here the baby oil was used for blending this out into this now you don't necessarily want to blend everything you might want to blend the odd bits or you might want to keep it so it's really free and loose and that you can see the marks made from the pastel it's completely up to you you're going to probably need to try a few things and see what works for you so let's go on with the picture. Now I've got a few areas that are wet, so I'm going to work down on the grass and then work up through it. I'm uh, hoping that it will dry out by that period, of, uh, well, dried out by that point that I've got to um, do in some sky detail. So for the grass area, I'm going to go in with some nice highlights. Okay, I'm looking at the yellows. I'll be a little bit strong. Yeah, that's probably better. And I can start drawing in to my dry acrylic surface. The, the trick here is to apply quite a lot of pressure and to be bold, okay? You might find that the color doesn't come up that strong or you might find it comes up really strong. It depends on which shade of acrylic you're sitting on top of with the marks. Uh, I'm putting this down because initially I'm gonna work up a little bit more of a darker green. So I've put that down. Now I'm going to grab um, some of my darker tones of green and I'm going to work some of those up. And I'm thinking about the types of marks I'm making. So obviously this is maybe grassland and I can blend if I want to. But remember you don't want to overwork. You've laid down all that hard work with the, the painting. So try to put only oil pastel where you really need to. Don't feel like you need to cover the whole area. Okay, uh, I'm bringing it up into the background, well, the hill area, so that I can get a little bit more accuracy because it was quite a quick flicking brush drawing that I was generating. Okay, and I'm going to increase some of the darker tone down here. And my cat is snoring her head off. Just ignore the noise in the background. That's her snoring quite happily on the bed. So. Now, I'm also doing this fairly quick and loose. 
obviously you could be a lot more just gentler, more polished when I'm doing it. Don't, you know, think, oh my goodness, look at the speed Kim's going at. Okay, and I'm going to just darken down some of that grass over here. And I'm going to get in some of the fence poles as well. So let's just get a brown some fence poles in now the trick here is not to oil pastel um put baby oil on it and then oil pastel back in it's so much harder to control it is to try and get all your oil pastel down in an area and then if you want to then use your baby oil So I've done the grass down there, I'm going to grab a little bit of baby oil and smooth out some of my work. So if I take my baby oil and just pour a little bit out into the head of it, you can pour it out into a container if you want to, get a little bit on the end of your brush, you don't need loads, a little will go a long way, and then you can use that to just blend out the oil pastel into the acrylic layer and the oil, baby oil will move it around the surface quite softly. It'll also dilute the colour a little bit so it gets a little bit softer. Now always get a tissue and wipe off if you're changing to work in a different area of colour because you can get cross contamination very easy using this type of technique. You can see, there you go, down the bottom in the foreground, it gives you a good idea of the type of results you can get. Now the trick then is to use the same approach and work up into the sky. And not to overwork it. Less is more. Now I would recommend that you work light to dark in the sky and that will stop you from making too many errors. You can see obviously I've got a load of pinks here which are really lovely to use. You could always take or grab a pink, put it next to your colour reference image and you can start seeing whether that's the right pink for the area you want. You can work in a little bit more of an accurate representation of highlights and shadows. Also if you need to fine tune any areas of colour or detail you can work that up too. You can see I'm just working along here at the moment. And I'll probably be bringing in some shadows in a little while. Keep it loose and free. to me so that was quite a quick little mini project hopefully you've got a little bit more time to spend than I have um go out paint some beautiful things which have lots of color in it and lots of tone and then give it a real whack with the oil pastels and use them to, to boost the color saturation and atmosphere of your artwork have fun everyone as always and I'll see you next week bye